Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. You've got frames in your hives from over the winter, or they've been in in the summer, maybe your honey supers. And in the cases of where some of them got partially drawn out, this is particularly common on wax on plastic foundation, which is much easier to fix. But the uh, where they have been partially drawn out like this, or on the other side, they've even reared brood on, in it, but they didn't draw it any further. What's happened in these frames is that they were in the process of building the comb while they had a honey flow, and then the honey flow stopped, or your feeding stopped, and they didn't have enough sugar coming in to finish drawing the comb, or they just didn't need to draw any more comb because the population went down. For instance, maybe you had a swarm. Anyway, when you have uh, foundation, particularly plastic foundation, but the same is true for wax foundation. When you've got foundation like that where it's been in the hive for a while and they haven't drawn out a good deal of it, they're not going to draw out that wax. They're not going to make that comb the way you would like to and you'll forever have a partially drawn comb like this. Where still you might have frames of foundation that have been in there for a whole season that they never got to draw. Now what's happened is the bees have either, one, repurposed the wax, they've taken the wax coating off the plastic and used it elsewhere, or just all those little legs walking over it has gradually worn the, the wax off the plastic. When you have that, they're not gonna draw that comb out unless it's a real exceptional circumstances. And then you end up with space that's occupied by foundation but not getting used and you end up having a swarm. Even though you, in your head you're thinking they've got plenty of room, why don't they draw out their comb? The reason is they just don't like the plastic or the used foundation that's maybe waxed and it just got smooth and they won't draw it out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take, I've got a few supers full of this foundation um, where one or two frames in a hive didn't get drawn out. And I've got them like either totally blank or partially drawn out. And we're going to recoat them with wax. And then I guarantee when you put those in the hive this spring, they're going to draw it out beautifully. Absolutely beautifully. And so what I'm going to do is use all these scraps. Here's the scraps I've been scraping off the hive. There's even some bit old brood in there and that sort of thing. Bits of grass and bits of twig and bits of... Uh, paper from my um, feeding and that sort of stuff. Now I've, what I've done is I've put it into an old crock pot. And I've got a crock pot here and it's gradually warming up now and it's melting down these scraps of wax that I mean collecting over the course of the spring and I will continue to collect through the summer. So that wax will gradually melt down. Now during during this um, fall, when we have a real honey flow, then I'll have a lot of wax. I'll have a lot of wax cappings I can do this with, but by then, they've already drawn the comb that I need. So either save it from last year, or use these scraps and that sort of thing. We're gonna melt it down, and once these have melted down, I'll show you how to recoat these frames, make them even better than new. Because actually, if you paint on the wax yourself, you're going to make these frames an even better prospect for the bees to draw out than, than the best store-bought uh, foundation. Because even though the, like the foundation I sell here is triple coated with wax, there's nothing like putting your own wax on it to make sure they draw it out really well and really fast. Because you're actually giving them the wax that they need to do some of that drawing out. It's going to save you a lot of money on new foundation and it'll stop you having a lot of swarms as well because the bees will build the combs that you mistakenly thought that they would have built. So keep watch this space while we melt this down. It'll take me a good hour for this to get melted down. Then we'll start painting some frames. So now the wax is melted down. I've added some more wax and I'll keep on adding some. It'll uh, take some doing. There are the odd bee larvae in here and that sort of thing, but that doesn't really matter. It's uh, propolis, honey, that sort of thing in there. 
Our aim is to get most of the wax. It does not have to be really clean wax. And all we have to do now, so I'm using a like a three inch paint roller. And that's all it needs. And all, I'm gonna also run not just on the blank foundation here, but just on the surface of the comb here. A very light film on the surface of the comb will allow that the bees to rebuild out that comb. The only problem with these rollers is that you fill up with uh, wax as well. So the, you get a bit of a technique developed after a bit. Just a light coating like that and it's done. Let's get a bit closer. This is actually a thicker coating than need I need to have. But that will get built up very, very quickly. This side's already built, but this side never would have been built without recoating it with wax. Again, this side's been built. That's just been torn off, so that will get rebuilt anyway. But this part never got built out, so that's the stuff we want to get coated. And that's all we need. So again, just to show you closer up, the bees might draw this further out, but without any further wax wax on this coating, on this foundation here, they would never draw this out. So by making sure we have a good coating of wax on the foundation, especially if it's freshly put on like this nice, warm thick coating of wax because right now it'll take a long while to dry out and hard make it really hard it doesn't really matter i mean it won't be stay warm of course but this will still stay soft for many weeks and the bees will build that particularly quickly if it's still relatively soft Comb partially drawn, filled with honey, but still wouldn't be rebuilt unless there's a new coating of wax on there.
by putting just a slight film of wax on the edges of these combs, it gives us a rough surface to build the bees to build up on. Seems if it's smoothed out, they don't really want to build on it any again. But now that it's got a, a layer of sort of rough wax just rolled onto it, they will clean this up and draw the wax out further. Prime example of a comb that's been in a hive for a while and not going to get rebuilt. See all sorts of propolis and that sort of thing on it, but a coating of wax on it like this, and they're going to rebuild that in no time. the best rule of thumb is that if the frame has been in there in a hive more than about a month or two it's and it didn't get built chances are it won't get built and that's that's the point at which it will benefit from having some wax put on it So all of these frames are going to be used to expand my brood chambers. Already been seen some of the videos where the uh, second super is being added to my single single uh, brood chamber colonies, and for my uh, hives that have had re brood chambers reversed, um, one or two of them might get another deep super. But what I will certainly be doing very soon is starting to split them and making nukes. And when I make nukes, I'll be using a lot more of this foundation as well, because uh, the nukes will be established for oh, several weeks in their box. Certainly the new nukes will be established for several weeks in the box um, while they grow and while the queens become established, at least those would have the new queens, not the overwintered queens of course, the overwintered queens are going to be um, re ready to go right away, 
but the colonies that I, the nukes I stock up with a new queen, they're going to want to be established for a good three to four weeks. And during that time, that colony is going to grow, and I need to have room for expansion. So those colonies will get one or two frames of foundation while they're growing. Now, something that's coming up at the moment, right today, we're the 14th of April. And in a couple of weeks' time, my club, Penobscot County Beekeepers, are having a, a Zoom meeting with a very special guest. You'll have heard me mention the name Ian Stepler from a Canadian Beekeepers blog on many occasions. Ian is a guy um, who runs about 1,500 colonies in Manitoba, and he runs most of those as single brood, cha as single brood chambers. In fact, all, just about all of them, except for the, the nukes, of course. And a lot of what he's doing there um, are, if, are exactly what I'm doing here. And that's because I, uh, whilst I was doing it on a very small scale before I discovered Ian's blogs, uh, when I saw Ian doing it on a large scale, um, this really started to fine tune what I wanted to do with my bees because what Ian's doing with his single colony management um, is very much how I think that I'm moving into, that's how I'm moving my honey production because it is, um, I think on the whole, a much better way to manage colonies. And whereas I would say that last year of my colonies, I probably had 70% as more than a single brood chamber. I would say that this year, I'm going to end up with more like 70% as a single brood chamber colony. Um, this will allow me, there's a lot of advantages of that that we'll discuss in future videos. But Ian is going to be joining us at Penobscot County Beekeepers with, for like an evening of discussion with a Zoom meeting. And that's going to be on the last Thursday of April, which I believe is the 29th of April. Um, it's going to be at 6 p.m. the last Thursday of April and we are going to you can join that discussion on let me see it's Penobscot County Beekeepers dot Main Beekeepers dot org so that's Penobscot County Beekeepers dot Main Beekeepers dot org that's going to be an interactive e evening with Ian Stepler where myself and Amy Nickerson will be having a discussion with them about various points. Now, you will need to register for that Zoom meeting because we're anticipating having more people than the uh, than we can handle otherwise. So, get a, go onto that site, Penobscot County Beekeepers dot Main Beekeepers dot org, to register for that interactive evening with Ian Stepler and you'll have an opportunity when you register to put down a question, some questions that you might want um, Amy and I to put to Ian. I don't think we'll have phone-in questions or anything like that. It's going to be um, written questions submitted to us that Amy and myself will uh, pose to Ian. But that's going to be a great evening. We've had uh, Ian's been a guest of ours in person at uh, Penobscot County Beekeepers a couple of years back and we had a great day with that and uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's just a shame Ian's not going to be able to be here and bring his wife Sandy with him because that was a, a lot of fun. We had a, a great evening out that day as well. But uh, I suppose it's all about beekeeping so you want to join us there so again to register go to Penobscot County Beekeepers dot Maine Beekeepers that's the state of Maine M-A-I-N-E Beekeepers dot O-R-G
So I hope you found that helpful. I've now gone through, I actually managed to go through 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 90 frames uh, with that wax and still had two pounds less over. So it might be more like five pounds that I started off with. At any rate, that um, has recoated these foundation, old used foundations with wax and now the bees will build on them beautifully. So now I'll have no hesitancy about using these in the buildup of my hives for this year. It makes life a lot easier to have foundation that you have all the confidence of the world in that the bees are gonna draw out properly. So if you have old foundation in the hives that the bees haven't built on, get them out, get a new coating of wax in there and, and you can reuse them and they're gonna, you'll see them build beautifully this year. I hope you found that helpful. Uh, I've been really enjoying doing these videos. Please press subscribe if you haven't already. And please share the videos with your friends and uh, let people know about it. The uh, channel is growing very well. I'm absolutely delighted about it. And uh, we're going to cover a whole load of new subjects coming up. So enjoy your beekeeping. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.